Hey y'all, welcome back to Jetty Rocks Fishing. Well today we have another catch, clean, and cook for you. And we're going to be doing catch, clean, and cook Atlantic Sharp Nose. It's a shark. It's a small species of shark that we have here on the Atlantic coast of Florida. And they're a very delicious fish. I mean, you do this right, it doesn't taste like fish at all. You'll actually think you're eating chicken. So real quick guys, check out these clips of us catching a couple sharks. Then I'll see you guys at the cleaning table. Then we're going to go over some misconceptions on shark meat and keeping sharks, how to keep sharks and all that kind of stuff. We'll be talking about that a little bit and then we'll be cooking up some shark, y'all. So check this Here out. Here we go. I'm hooked up. This one did. Okay, hooked up. Hook this one up. Oh, oh. Grab it, Summer, grab it. Tighten the drag, tighten the drag. I don't know. see. Okay, go ahead. Oh, boy. Keep going. It's just a small piece of bait. He's on there, just reel. He's on there. Alright. All right. Craziness right here. Oh, no, keep reeling. He might be running to you, babe. If, you don't, if he's not on there, we'll just oh, oh, oh. put him back. Yeah, I knew he was on there. I knew he was on there. You want me to take that one so you can help Snow with that one? I got it. Oh. I keep going with him. Can go there? Right, I got to deal with this fish real quick. For a minute, buddy. Right. What's Summer doing? Oh, he's, he's okay. He's Never mind. Okay, don't don't bend it like that so it goes underneath the boat. Okay, let him come around. Let him come around. Bring him around. Really Bring him around. He doesn't want to come around. <sighs> Phone's ringing. Is that me? Yeah, it's you. This is the one I want to say. Uh, call you back, Bill. There you go. Which way are you going with him? Careful up here, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, bring him to me. Oh, he's not. Well, he's like. Shit. All right. Okay, back up. All right. There we go. Not the biggest ones. There we go. We got our two sharks for the limit. Get loud. Two per boat, one per person. Doesn't matter how many people's on your boat, you're only allowed two per boat. There's no size limit on Atlantic Sharp Nose. <coughs> Excuse me, and those are really good eating, really, really good eating sharks. All right, guys, well, we got our Atlantic Sharp Nose here. This is a fairly small Atlantic Sharp Nose. They do get a little bit bigger. Maybe about another, maybe even another foot bigger, a little bit bigger around, but this is still a decent size Atlantic sharp nose and really great for the table, really good eating. And now as you notice, the shark is not gutted. I do not gut my sharks when I catch them. I get them very cold. I don't believe in the practice of gutting sharks where you catch them with these smaller sharks because these sharks are in what they call a pupping area or a bedding area. And if you gut a shark in that area, you'll completely destroy that area for ever catching another shark. So you don't want to do that. With these smaller sharks, you don't have to gut them as soon as you catch them. That is a complete miss, misinformation. Larger sharks, I completely agree with it, but usually when you're catching them, they're not in a pupping area. You're catching them on a reef or behind a shrimp boat or something like that. And if you gut them right then, it's really not gonna make any difference. All right guys, I got my Atlantic sharp nose here and I'm gonna go ahead and Prepare it to get it ready to clean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take the fins off. Just like that. Just like that. Top fin here as well. And then right here where the gut, the, the reproductive organs are and the belly meat. So I'll come through just like this. Come up right here where the fins were. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and remove all the guts. All right, now I got my shark prepared to clean. I'm just gonna come through this little belly frap right here, push it through, just come through. I'm gonna turn my knife sideways along that cartilage. Go all the way down the shark, just like that. Beautiful fillet. Come through, punch it through. Turn my knife sideways, and there you go. Just like that. And all this is discarded. You can cut all this meat off. It is good meat. It goes just like this. There's no, there's no uh, pieces of bone going up because they don't have bone in them. It's all cartilage. And what you do is just take this off like that and you got a nice little piece of shark meat all right well I got my filet here so now I'm gonna go ahead and skin it and what I do is I leave a little bit of the meat on the skin about like that I'm gonna leave all that dark meat on that skin so I just raise my knife up just a little bit so I will do that see just like that when you come to this point right here just tilt your knife up a little bit from it. Still keep your knife off the skin a little bit. Come through that belly meat and bam. There you go, you have a really nice piece of shark meat. And all you do now is just clean it up a little bit. Got a little bit of stuff right here. Sorry for the noise in the background guys. They're doing some construction work over here. There we go. Got really nice shark steaks right there, guys. On this underside, where you got this little belly piece, just come in a little sideways, a little pressure on it, and there you go. Well, here we go, you guys. Here's my nice, clean shark meat. It's got a little bit of dark meat on it, but that's no problem. For the most part, it's really clean looking meat. And this stuff, if done right, fry it you can make buffalo shark bites out of it you can grill it and it will have no fishy taste whatsoever you won't even realize you're eating fish it'll taste more like chicken or pork all right well we got the shark clean so now we're going to go out in the garage and we're going to have a conversation y'all we're going to talk about keeping sharks how to prepare sharks how to process your sharks and we're going to get to that so i'll meet you guys in the garage all right guys real quick i'm going to go over a few things about sharks with you guys Sharks are broken down into three major categories. You got your small coastal sharks, which is what I target. You have your pelagic sharks or your deep water sharks. And then you have your large coastal sharks. But we're not gonna worry about any of those other than the small coastals, because that's what I target most of the time. And that's what's in this video. I usually target the Atlantic sharp nose and the black nose shark. Those are the two major species that I like to target. And you know, once in a while we'll get some black tips. Once in a while we will get a black tip shark. And being this is a Atlantic sharp nose video, we're going to talk about how I harvest the small coastal sharks because it is a little bit different than your larger coastals. Because most of these smaller coastal sharks, they're going to be found, especially the Atlantic sharp nose, are going to be found in areas that are pupping grounds, which they pretty much live there or they travel there every year. You'll find them there every year, and that's where they're, you know, mating and having their pups and all that kind of stuff and the reason why i'm telling you that is because there's a big misconception with sharks that you have to gut a shark as soon as you catch it or you can't eat it this simply is not true with larger sharks it is a good it is a good practice i'll agree with that 100 and i'll even give some credit to another youtuber joe vt fishing he did a great video on harvesting some larger coastal sharks and I will give you guys a link to that video in the description area of this video. And also, if I can remember to put a card up here somewhere, I'll put a card so you can just go right over and watch that video. It's a great video and how he processes his larger sharks. And I agree with it 100% on the larger sharks. On these smaller sharks, your Atlantic sharp nose, your black nose, your bonnet heads, your fine tooth, and your, uh, your smaller black tips, I don't gut them at all i think it's a waste of time and you do not want to do that in an area that you're catching them if you're behind a shrimp boat and you're gutting a shark no big deal because that's not a pupping ground if you're out there on the reefs and you've caught a couple sharks and you want to gut them out there that's not a big deal either
But in areas like where I'm fishing, in areas that are quite frequently used as pupping grounds, you gut a shark in that area, you will kill that area permanently. You'll never catch another shark there. It'll completely ruin that pupping area and they'll never come back. It's happened to me too many times. When I first started shark fishing, I was in the same mindset, gut a shark, da 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 da. And I'd catch a shark, gut a shark, and go back to catch sharks there and I would never catch a shark there. And then years would go by, years go by, years go by, and I never caught a shark there. And then I started finding another area, I catch some sharks and I wouldn't gut them. Then I had a buddy go in, I showed him the area, he went in, caught some sharks, he gutted them, killed the area, done. No more sharks there. So do not do that. If you're an avid shark fisherman, you like to eat sharks and you have found a good area where they're pupping and you're catching them quite regularly, you gut that shark, you'll kill that area. So don't do that. My best advice for you guys, if you're going to keep these smaller sharks, the smaller coastals, I'm talking sharks under 100 pounds and you know mainly under 50 pounds but you know black tip gets between that 50 and 100 pound range but definitely any shark under 50 pounds you don't have to gut them it's i've gutted them i've not gutted them and literally it does not make no difference in the taste of the meat it does not i've done it both ways i'm here to tell you when i make shark for people they can't even tell they're eating fish they think they're eating chicken or pork the best thing you can do is take that shark get him cold immediately make a, a salt water and, and fresh water ice slurry put that shark in it get his core temperature down as quick as possible get him cold when you get home put him in a cooler cover him in ice and let that shark get extremely cold and then the next morning when you want to clean the shark you know gut him first and then you can go ahead and do your cleaning process and another thing about sharks sharks do have an odor whether you gut them or you don't gut them they are always going to have an odor. Some people think it stinks. Me personally, it's just a strong odor. It doesn't really bother me, but it does not transfer into the meat. Once you cook that shark, it doesn't transfer whatsoever. Once you clean the shark and you've got the meat in the freezer or you've thawed out your meat, it's in the refrigerator, that smell does not transfer. And yes, there is a, everybody says sharks pee through their skin, da, 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 da. They, use, they do secrete through their skin. Their skin is an organ, just like our skin is an organ, how we sweat. But that doesn't go through the meat of the shark. So it has no bearing on the taste of the meat. A lot of people are you know, kind of messed up about that. They think they pee through their skin, so it makes their meat bad. That's absolutely false. That is not the case. They do not pee through their meat. They do urinate or secrete through the skin. The skin is an organ. Once you remove the skin, you've killed that, it's done. And the meat will not have any urine taste to it, will not have any bad taste to it, as long as you keep the shark cold. If you do let it get hot, let the shark get warm, or you don't ice it down properly, I don't care if you gut it or you don't gut it, the shark will spoil. Shark do spoil very quickly. So you do need to keep them cold 100%. That is the main key with sharks, keeping them cold. Another tip for you guys, when you, have your, when you clean your shark, you have your shark meat, you got it all cut up in your little steaks, put it in a Ziploc bag and set it in the refrigerator overnight. You, know, you want to let the meat rest a little bit. You don't really want to eat shark fresh because it can tend to be a little bit tough. So let it rest for a little bit. You've already let it rest in your cooler overnight and then you cleaned it. Now you let it rest in the refrigerator overnight. Now it should be tender enough to eat. It should taste really good. And if you notice, there's really not a lot of blood Actually, no blood, just a little bit of liquid in the bag. So, yes, shark can be bloody, and a lot of people say you should bleed them. But if you put them in a cooler, you get them nice and cold, you do that ice bath as soon as you catch them. I haven't had no problem with any blood in the meat or anything like that, and definitely have no fishy taste whatsoever in any of the shark meat that I've processed. All right, guys, we're going to cut up some shark meat here. We're going to get it ready. For frying and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut in little bite-sized pieces about like this basically just making little shark bites cut it up the same way if I'm going to do like a buffalo shark bites I do it the same way but I fry it a little bit differently these I'm going to bread and I'm just going to make quick and easy shark nuggets and I'm telling you if you do this right it tastes like chicken or pork. 
There will be no fishy taste whatsoever to this at all. And shark's texture isn't like other fish. It has more of a meaty texture to it. More of that of chicken and pork. A lot of people say when they eat like a shark steak on the grill, that it tastes like a white steak. And that's actually very true. All right, well, I'm just gonna keep cutting these up so I get enough. And then we'll start breading them and frying them up. All right, I got all my Atlantic sharp nose cut up. And as you can tell, it's a really nice, clean meat. Very nice. And the meat itself, Smells very clean, smells very good. No, none of that sharky urine smell that everybody talks about. Very clean smelling, very clean meat. So now I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit because it ain't really quite time for me to start cooking. Let these sit for a little bit in the refrigerator and we'll come back and we'll bread them real quick. Get the green light on the fryer and we'll start cooking these up. All right, I got my shark meat. I got my fryer getting ready to go. It's heating up right now. I notice I didn't soak any of my shark meat in milk or buttermilk or any of that stuff. You just, you really don't need to do that. That's just an old wives tale. It doesn't help no, no way, shape or form in the flavor of the meat. But you're just going to bread them right here. This is a house autry where I normally bread my fish in. I'm just going to do a dry breading. You can do an egg wash, a milk and egg wash, make it a little crispier if you like. We just like our fish done this way. So that's how we're going to do it. And then we're going to get a, when the fryer gets up to temperature, it'll be 375 degrees. That's what we're going to fry our shark bites at. And it's pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, I got my little mountain of uh, breaded shark bites there. So now I just got to wait for that green light on the fryer and we'll be ready to go. All righty, we got the green light. So we're going to start popping these bad boys in here. That should be good enough for the first little batch. Alrighty. Alrighty, these are looking about done. Nice and golden brown. Alrighty. Dump those out. I'm going to hit them with some salt. Just as they come out so that salt sticks to it. All right, last batch is done. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Now I just gotta make me some french fries. And we are good to go. Oh yeah. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, while I'm waiting for Amber to get home and for our french fries to get done, I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple here. We'll sit down and we'll have a taste. All righty, y'all. Here we go. Awesome. Now, like Amber likes to eat hers with tartar sauce. Summer usually likes to eat hers with hot sauce. I like to eat mine plain. I don't use no sauces, no hot sauce, no tartar sauce, no nothing. And here we go, guys. Look at that. Looks like chicken. You all don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you. You never tried shark. You don't know what you're missing. There's nothing like it. It does not taste like fish whatsoever. It doesn't have a fish texture. It doesn't have a fish flavor. It tastes very similar to chicken, but not chicken. I even would say it's better than chicken. Fried chicken is my, one of my favorite all-time foods, period. I love a really good fried chicken. 
but I would take this over a chicken nugget any day. Any day. Shark is delicious, y'all. It really is. Please go over and check out that video from Joe VT Fishing so you can see how he processes the larger sharks. It's a very good practice. I don't agree with those practices for the smaller sharks, but for the larger sharks, 100%. It's a great video. He does a really good job. So go over and check that, guys. Check that out. I'll put the link at the bottom of this video in the description area. And hopefully I'll remember and put a card in here somewhere. But you all know I'm super bad about that. But this stuff is awesome, guys. So if you're catching small sharks or smaller sharks, your sharp nose, your black nose, your barnet heads, your fine tooth, your small black tips, you don't have to gut them, guys. You really don't. And if you're catching an abundance of them, most likely you're in a pupping area or an area where they come every year and they gather in that area and they're laying their pups, they're giving birth, they're doing their whole thing that they do. You gut a shark there, you'll ruin it, y'all. I'm telling you, it's happened to me many times. I've had throughout the years, because I'm an avid shark fisherman, I'm an avid shark eater. I love eating sharks. I've had many times through the years, people find out where I'm fishing, they go in and catch sharks, and they listen to everybody and gut sharks, and they completely kill the area. I have areas that still 10, 15 years later, there's no sharks there. They're gone. And that's because somebody gutted a shark there after they caught it. So please don't do that with these smaller ones. Larger ones, have at it. But also with these smaller sharks, guys, before anybody makes any comments, they're very plentiful. They're a very renewable resource. You're not going to overfish them. They're not commercially harvested. You only allow two per boat. No matter how many people's on your boat, you allow one per person. They're very abundant. They reproduce very fast. So they, you're not going to overfish these fish. I appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a little bit of something in this video. I know some of you probably won't agree with me. That's fine. Everybody's got opinions. We all know what opinions are like. But you guys have a good one. I appreciate each and every one of y'all. Y'all are the best subscribers on YouTube. And you guys mean the world to me. You really do. So I'll see y'all again. Tight lines, J-Rockers. And we'll be seeing y'all real soon.